one home to be sold. And these five realtors are hoping to sell it. They each bring their own talents and experience to the table. But at the end of the day, only one of them will walk away with the listing. It's all down to who can convince the seller that they are the best. Who will the seller choose as the best one for the job? It's Game On, on Seller's Market. My name's Karen Wells, and my husband, Paul. Um, we've been married for 14 years. In May of this year, actually, we retired from uh, supported living for people with mental illness. We had them living in our home with us for about 14 years, probably, yeah. Um, at one time, we had four people in our basement suite. The home is a five-bedroom, three-bathroom, 3,000-square-foot house with a separate two-bedroom carriage house, great for rental income or extended family. I bought this house in 95 before I met Paul. Um, I actually got an inheritance from my uncle, and that was my down payment. And um, best thing I ever did in my life, really. <laughs> Karen and Paul have three sons and four grandchildren, so the extra space has come in very useful. It was really nice at one time we had um, Morgan and Jen, my oldest son and his family were living in their basement suite and my mom was in the carriage house and for almost a whole year, every night we had dinners together and really um, a big family unit. Their retirement plan was to keep the house for the family to live in while Karen and Paul spent more time traveling. But things didn't work out that way. Last October, I found a mole on the back of my leg. First biopsy was uh, positive for melanoma, so then I had it removed by surgery and it, they got everything. I'm cancer free because, you know, they got the mole. My son, not so lucky, had one and he left it. And uh, now it's metastasized. And he's actually got one on his brain now. So they're, he's going for radiation in a couple of weeks. We decided to change everything because we figured for years we could just rent the house and let them stay up here. He'd continue working, and, but now, you know, we figure he needs more help and stuff like that. And so we'd like to be around more to help him with the new baby. And, uh, you know. Their new plan is to sell the property and use the money to help all three of their sons financially, hopefully jumpstarting their own property purchases. How much do Karen and Paul think their home is worth? We're hoping to be over the 600000 anyways. Let's meet the four realtors who are set to battle it out for this listing. Daryl is an all-around nice guy who spends much of his time helping local charities. Marika combines a successful career in real estate with raising a young family. Luke believes in a personal, hands-on approach to selling homes and loves the finer things in life. An ex-entrepreneur and a Taekwondo black belt, Dean is consistently in the top 6% of Canadian realtors. These four realtors are about to get their first look at Karen and Paul's unusual property. Built in 1973, the 2,900 square foot house has a total of five bedrooms and three bathrooms. The level lot is around a quarter of an acre in size, with plenty of parking out front, and a large deck off the back. I just came off the really large deck that's in the back of the house and I walked into this renovated kitchen. I love the granite counters. The separate dining area is great. This neighborhood would be about 85% of this style of house, which is a bi-level. They're really good for families. Um, the only unfortunate thing is when they're around this age range, they're not usually updated that much. So it's nice that this one's been updated a bit. This is a really great family space. This, um, these types of homes are my bread and butter because uh, most of the deals I do are in this price range. Another thing about homes this age is that they're usually at the stage where the windows need to be replaced, furnaces, hot water tanks. Uh, if this is a starter home for somebody, that can make a big difference in how they look at it. This doesn't have the open concept going into the kitchen, so it is a little bit more traditional style, but it does have the openness through the dining area. This house was built in 1973. A lot of people don't realize that we can actually move all these walls if we want to, and we could make this into a, a huge open concept area. The master bedroom with ensuite bathroom is also upstairs, along with an additional bedroom 
and another full upstairs bath. Downstairs, the full height finished basement is currently used as a rental suite. This is a two bedroom suite in the lower level of the house. And one more bedroom that could be turned into a third. It probably shows quite compact on camera. It actually is a very large area. There's lots of space, it's really bright down here. Not in pristine condition, there's, it's got a lot of rough edges. But certainly there's life left in all the material here. This is a fantastic little mortgage helper for whoever's living upstairs. If you can get a thousand bucks a month coming in on a suite, you're effectively shaving 200,000 off your mortgage, which is, which is huge for people that need a hand. In the back of the property is a 960 square foot carriage house built in 2006. It's a completely self-contained apartment with its own master bedroom, a four-piece bathroom, and a full kitchen. That's a huge bedroom. I do love this carriage house. I don't like low-hanging lights. I've hit my head on about a million of these things. So I normally like to limbo underneath them a little bit. It's very open, the kitchen's nice. There's lots of space in here. This, frankly, is the nicest out of the three livable spaces in this house. And I think, you know, somebody who purchases this property will probably want to live here. And if they don't, this will probably get the most rent because it is also the most private. There's nobody living above you, there's nobody living below you, and you've got a wonderful courtyard area between the two houses, and there's even more yard in behind this house. These things could be $100,000 to build, and they're gonna bring in $2,000 a month in rental income. So it's a fantastic idea if you have the lot that, can, that works for it. The realtors have looked around the various suites. What are their first impressions of the house overall? This property is fantastic in a sense that it, uh, it really allows somebody to get into the market and have a good chunk of their mortgage payment covered. It's a great investment property for sure. Definitely, your mortgage is definitely getting covered there, plus a little bit more. These type of properties just don't exist where this property ex is situated. This uh, property, if it's priced correctly, will sell within a week. This is an unusual property. What type of buyer would this appeal to? It could be for a young family who kind of needs the extra income suite as a mortgage helper. Someone who has a very large family can make use of the seven bedrooms, three kitchens, three sets of laundry. Or it could be a, just a straight out investor that we know the vacancy rate is here is like 0.00. .00. And why do they think they should win this listing? I like helping people because a lot of a lot of times people won't put up their hands and help out people, especially people that they don't know. I think in our job it's, uh, it's very unique where we can help people out in all sorts of different situations and that's what I love about it. It absolutely touches me. I think um, just the whole selflessness of you know the parents wanting to help their kids and um, giving them pretty much the rest of what they're going to have so that they have a better future, I think that's huge and it really, really warms my heart. I moved here because my father was dying of cancer. We did have to come back and do what was right so we could spend time with loved ones. But I think I know why they're making this choice to sell this very unique and special property. And um, apart from being a little bit emotional now, I do know that when the time comes to help them go through the contracts and do the marketing and prepare this property to sale, I can help them a lot. My baby brother died uh, of a drug overdose when he was 29. It uh, was devastating for my mother. My mother died a year after my brother did. Uh, she got cancer all of a sudden. You want someone who's gonna be like a rock and understand what they're going through, but take care of the professional details so that they don't, they don't have to worry about that stuff and uh, stay in close contact with them every step of the way. It's time for the realtors to make their pitch. They'll each get 10 minutes to convince Karen and Paul why they should win the listing. The realtors aren't having too bad of a time waiting downstairs. They have some adorable dash house to keep them company. The three family dogs seem to really like real estate agents. First to pitch is Daryl. I was a realtor for about seven or eight years. And I, for me, it was always just going through the motions. You know, I would do a job, help out the client, get a paycheck. And there got to a point where I felt like I wasn't helping people enough. I felt like I wasn't doing a good job. You know, numbers wise, I was still, I had a good career going, but it just, it felt like my heart wasn't in it. So I actually quit real estate at that time. And everybody always says, oh, if I'm not having fun, I'm gonna quit. 
nobody's ever done that. <laughs> but I did. Mm -hmm. So I golfed a lot during that two years off. <laughs> um, and I did a ton of charity work. And for me, like, that's where my heart was, was helping people. I got back into real estate and my focus every single day and every single time I would deal with a person was helping them out in whatever situation they were in. I'll make goals every year, but it's gonna be how many people I wanna help. Mm -hmm. And if I hit those goals, then I'm doing good. If I surpass those goals, I'm doing even better. Daryl talked about himself. So it was kind of interesting to hear that, you know, his process, his, um, what his focus was and where he was coming from, kind of, that was really interesting to hear. There's my marketing plan, an evaluation that I've done on the place, and all that other stuff. Um, it's all good and you can go through it, but like I say, for me, I just wanted to get across the, the motivation that I take into every deal or every client that I, that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, I'll leave this as a copy with you. What do you think we can list it for? somewhere between 650 to 660. So if there's a list price of 659, something like that. Yeah. Again, it's gonna be getting that value across to the prospective buyers where right. here's the amount of rental income. If we can paint that picture, I mm -hmm. think that that's what, that's what gets people through the door. Daryl revealed that helping people means more to him than anything else. And it's what he strives for every day. He suggested listing the home at 659,000, well above the seller's target of 600,000. Next to pitch, is Marika. Well, first of all, I just wanted to thank you both for having us here. It's been a pleasure going through your house today. It's been a pleasure listening to the baby. I was told that there's a baby here, so yeah. I was hoping he'd be here so I could hold him. <laughs> but anyways, you're going to hear a lot of great information today. Um, you know, we are all here to help you sell this house. Um, we all really feel heartfelt about your whole story. Um, and that is something that's, you know, going to help us going forward. Um, I tell everybody that emotions sell homes. Um, the whole story, the way you present the house, everything, you know, learning from us, being able to learn from you, you know, what's gone on here, where do you spend the most time, all that fun stuff, you know, that's what sells homes. Um, when people come into your house, they feel warmth, they feel the love. So that's what I'm here to help you guys do. I have two little kids too, and I feel the selflessness that you want to have for them. I know when my little son, when he's sick, I just want to take that away from him and yeah. take it on myself. It's terrible. So thing. it's, it is. Um, of course, Marika's connection with children was emotional for me. So that was tough. We both were crying, so. <laughs> Here to help you guys sell this house. It's a great property. The the income value for the, the year is amazing. Yeah. It's a solid house. I think it's gonna sell really, really quickly. We're in a great market here in Kelowna, so you're not gonna have a problem uh, getting it done. Okay. So I have done all the comparable work for you. Um, I'm thinking of a price around 659. I was teetering on the price and thinking we can, maybe we could go up a little bit more, but if you want to kind of get it done quickly, I think staying close to that 659 mark is going to do the job for you. Okay. I'm going to leave this for you to have a look through. Okay. Um, but yeah, I make myself 100% available to all my clients and I would really love to help you. Marika's pitch was very emotional. As a mother, she really empathized with the situation the Wells are dealing with. She suggested a listing price of 659,000, the exact same suggested price as Daryl. Next to pitch is Dean. My name is Dean and I help people sell homes with carriage houses, but you've got other challenges going on too because you've got, you, when you do sell, you're going to help the boys. Yes. You're going to help everybody out a little. Everyone gets the same portion. So, well, we're going to try to that way. <laughs> we'll try to be as fair as You're going to be as fair as possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some, you know, I mean, my oldest son, because of his diagnosis, needs a little more help right. because he's yeah. can't work. Yeah. Um, and right that's now. just is what it is. Yeah. You know, and I yeah. think everyone else in the family probably understands that. Oh, for sure. And I think that if they're not working with someone already, we'd love to sit down with them and talk to them. I teach real estate buying seminars on a regular basis, but I could give that same curriculum to all the boys and show them how to make a good initial purchase in real estate on their own or whatever they're going to do. Like mm -hmm. just helping them decide what the right thing is to do based yeah. on their situation. We really like Dean because to begin with, he talked about educating my three boys into um, 
the, the real estate market. There's two ways to value, well, there's actually three ways to value this property. The first method is called cost. What does it cost to rebuild it all if right. it burns down? Well, yeah. okay, we don't want that. What would it cost on the open market? That's what realtors will often tell you. So we compare it to other properties in the area. But there's a third method that most people don't know, which is called the income method. And this property makes a lot of income if you choose not to live here. And we can create from that a value of what it's worth. Mm -hmm. And it's really accurate. And the banks will actually lend money on it. A lot of information. Like he did that. It was really cool that he did the analysis of what the bank would say when you went to purchase the home. The exact price that I would currently list right now would be probably $6.99. Because if you look in this report later on, there's only seven carriage houses for sale in Kelowna. All the other ones are higher than that price. Dean suggested that they focus on educating the entire family about the real estate market and recommended listing at 699,000, well above the other two. Last to pitch is Luke. So I read a little bit about your story and uh, just, I wanna tell you a little bit about myself and then let you ask me any questions you want. Um, I've got two small daughters. I'm a single dad, uh, five and a half and, ten and 11 and a half. Wow. Uh, 11 and a half year old lives with me. And uh, so children are super important to me. Uh, it was nice to hear that he's doing the best he can with his children and, and um, it's tough, you know, to be a single parent. I was one for many years, so it's not an easy thing to do, you know, and I admire anybody that does it. I, uh, what I want to do for you is help you with the professional side of what needs to happen. There's a lot of details and a lot of, uh, you know, things that have to happen, got to be done correctly and precisely so that um, you don't have to stress about that side of things, you know? Cool. Um, I've done a lot of deals with houses like this. I've been a tenant and a landlord many times, so I know about tenant issues and you know the legal things that we have to take care of if, if someone is buying a place with a tenant. And I'm also very sensitive to your, to your tenants. Uh, I, think, uh, I think I should close, sell close to 700,000. Uh, I like the number eight because the Asian people consider it a lucky number. So I would recommend 698.8 as a listing price. Okay. Yeah. And I think that, uh, I think you will get between 650 and 698. Luke also connected with Karen and Paul as a parent and stressed his experience in dealing with tenanted properties. He suggested listing at 698,000 right below Dean. All four realtors have made their pitch. Now it's time for Karen and Paul to make their decision while the realtors keep the dogs entertained. Daryl was really likable. I mean, I really liked the way he um, talked about why he was a realtor. Um, but in the end, his price point was just a little bit lower than what we had hoped for. Daryl's price came in too low, so he's out this time. When he left the table, I had nothing in front of me to say, oh, okay, what, what did he say about that? Or what was the, you know, it was all verbal. And I'm a very visual person. Not Be having perfect. that was definitely a big lack. With Daryl and Luke gone, it's down to the final two. We chose. We chose. We chose. <laughs> With Daryl and Luke eliminated, it's down to the final two. Will Dean or Marika be the winning realtor? Marika's price, price point was a little low. Um, it is kind of what we thought, you know, we'd be happy with, but, and that was just the beginning, right? Um, but then in the end, that was kind of our, that's what put us over the fence with who we chose, the realtor we chose because of the listing price. So Dean wins the listing and starts out with a greeting from the entire You're the wiener! You're the top dog! And enthusiastic Wells family. <laughs> and there you go! Thank you very much. Thank you! Six months later, That's awesome. what's happened? 
Shortly after we did the show, like things really started happening. Stager came in, that was amazing. We listed the property and, and Morgan got quite sick after we listed the property, so it was a little bit stressful. We still managed to get some people through the house. Unfortunately, in that period of time, Morgan passed away. He passed away on December 16th. Went to his brain. I've never had that before. Like you have a client actually pass away after listing and it was really hard. Um, they removed the tumor from the cerebellum and he was in rehab for a month. Then he came back home and uh, then the symptoms started coming tumor. back again and they did another and they just, it was huge. And while he was in the hospital, we, we, they, nobody expected it. He just, during the night, he just passed. Morgan passing away from cancer put everything on hold, but a potential buyer had seen the value in the property and was prepared to wait. And we ended up settling on 641 500 uh, which we thought was a good price. Karen was super happy with the price. The purchaser was excellent because he said, you know, if you pay this price, why don't I let the family stay there for no rent until June? And that's helped a lot because it allowed Karen to go purchase a home in Lake Country and now Morgan's family can move into that and they'll transition in there over the next two to three months after the sale closed. As well as this home for Morgan's family, Karen and Paul are planning to help the rest of the family with the money from the sale of their house. Working with Karen was awesome. Karen is the mom, she's the grandmother. She is the glue that keeps her family together and she is so loving. I don't know, you can't be around Karen and not smile. Uh, I could never have a bad day and meet Karen in the same day. Dean is amazing, he really is. He really was uh, very thoughtful um, with the sensitivity of everything happening with our family. And Dean is continuing to help the family as well. Karen and Paul have actually purchased a waterfront property, and if that property closes, they'll be living the life of luxury in the Okanagan waterfront. We're just gonna have fun for the next, especially this year, I told Paul, there's no big rentals happening. Serious? I'm serious. <laughs> but it has a dock, and it has an area for the kids, and I can just see the entire family, you know, having a wonderful Saturday afternoon, you know, playing games in the water and enjoying the lake. We just want to be at the beach all day, right? Right, And that's not going to be hard to do, is it?